poor richard's almanac by benjamin franklin selections from the apothegms and proverbs with a brief sketch of the life of benjamin franklin published nineteen fourteen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org read by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana in november two thousand fifteen poor richard's almanac introduction life of benjamin franklin followed by aphorisms one through ninety nine of six hundred and seventy eight life of benjamin franklin opposite historic old south church in boston on january sixth seventeen o six was born benjamin franklin benjamin was the fifteenth child of josiah franklin whose occupation was that of a tallow chandler or candle maker business was not prosperous and the franklin family was reared in very humble circumstances as a child benjamin hungered for books and knowledge during the two years that his father was able to send him to school he showed remarkable aptitude and industry and rapidly outdistanced his fellow pupils the first book which franklin read was bunyan's pilgrim's progress by trading and borrowing he managed to secure other volumes his passion for reading was so intense that he attracted the attention of a kind-hearted boston merchant who gave the boy access to his well-stocked library franklin read only books which could add to his education and read them with a thoroughness that extracted every bit of useful knowledge after leaving school franklin was apprenticed to his brother james in the printing trade his wage was very small and he had to live most frugally james started a newspaper and benjamin set type and distributed the sheets one day he anonymously contributed some verses and apothegms and was overjoyed to find them accepted and published when his brother discovered that he was the contributor an altercation broke out between the two due principally to the ill temper of james the quarrel was finally the cause of benjamin's leaving boston and going to philadelphia in philadelphia franklin obtained work with keimer a printer his lodgings were found at the house of mr reed with whose pretty daughter deborah he promptly fell in love mrs reed however counseled the two to postpone the marriage until franklin should earn sufficient to maintain his own household he was but eighteen years old at this time sir william keith governor of the province of pennsylvania became acquainted with franklin and offered to set him up in the printing business franklin of course accepted at keith's suggestion he sailed to england to purchase an up-to-date outfit arrived there he found that keith was without credit his beautiful plans went for naught and he was stranded in england without funds or prospects it took him several years to work his way back to america when he returned the first news to greet franklin was the marriage of deborah reed to another man at twenty-two years of age franklin had not made much progress toward the goal of his ambition but nothing daunted he applied himself with greater industry greater self-sacrifice and greater perseverance he kept plugging away at his trade of printer and entered into business ventures with other men all of which proved rapid failures finally he struck out for himself coincidentally deborah reed's husband died and franklin took her to wife the young couple had to live on close margin for a few years when franklin was twenty-seven years of age he evolved the idea which opened the road to fame and fortune this was poor richard's almanac the first number had a tremendous sale his homely trite common-sense sayings achieved wide popularity and each succeeding issue found more subscribers than its predecessor the general recognition and respect gained for franklin through the almanac gave him the opportunity to enter public life this sphere of activity was greatly to his liking he held important offices and introduced many splendid reforms into the municipal government franklin's pet project was an efficient institute of learning when he was thirty-seven years old his plans materialized into the founding of an academy from which has grown the great university of pennsylvania the scientists of europe were at this time becoming aware of a mysterious force which they named electricity muschenbroek 
a german came forth with the discovery of the leyden jar franklin immediately devoted himself to a study of electricity the subject proved too interesting so full of possibilities that he sold out his printing business in order to devote his entire effort to the new field his business started on nothing brought the handsome price of ninety thousand dollars when franklin declared his belief that electricity and lightning were identical the whole world laughed he then made his famous kite test and proved his theory this demonstration gained world recognition for him as a scientist and won him many honors the colonies were now passing through the turbulent period preceding the revolutionary war franklin was a foremost figure in public life and became the commissioner of the colonies to england the first cause for provocation on the part of the colonies was the stamp act which imposed an enormous tax on deeds college degrees and printed matter england sought to meet the expenses of the french indian war by this tax franklin's efficient representation and effective pleading secured its repeal in seventeen sixty six however one year later parliament enacted a more obnoxious bill placing a heavy duty on tea glass and other commodities then it was that certain indignant citizens of boston held their boston tea party and brought upon the heads of the community the ill-considered hateful boston port bill the city was virtually put into a state of seizure by the british under general gage this final action precipitated the crisis and the revolutionary war was on gage made his disastrous march to concord and lexington and bunker hill ended in a triumph for american pluck although in favor of settling the dispute by arbitration franklin was as zealous a patriot as any he was a member of the first continental congress and helped frame the declaration of independence later he went to paris as special envoy to france for the colonies he was received with great acclaim and was accorded many honors his mission of enlisting france's aid in the struggle was completely successful helped by the money of france and by the valor of such men as lafayette the revolution triumphed after an absence from america of nine years franklin returned he was given a royal reception although seventy-seven years old now he still gave his country the best that was in him until his death on april seventeenth seventeen ninety at his burial twenty thousand persons gathered to do him respect and honor franklin's life has been called the most interesting and the most successful lived by any american and the explanation is found in the rule that guided him throughout his career to go straight forward in doing what appears to be right leaving the consequences to providence end of introduction now here are aphorisms one through ninety nine one a child thinks twenty shillings and twenty years can scarce ever be spent two a cold april the barn will fill three a countryman between two lawyers is like a fish between two cats four act up rightly and despise calumny dirt may stick to a mud wall but not to polished marble five a cipher and humility make the other figures and virtues of tenfold value six a false friend and a shadow attend only while the sun shines seven a father's a treasure a brother's a comfort a friend is both eight a fat kitchen a lean will nine a fine genius in his own country is like gold in the mine ten a flatterer never seems absurd the flattered always takes his word eleven after three days men grow weary of a wench a guest and weather rainy twelve after crosses and losses men grow humbler and wiser thirteen a full belly is the mother of all evil fourteen a full belly makes a dull brain fifteen a good example is the best sermon 
16. A good lawyer, a bad neighbor. 17. A good man is seldom uneasy, an ill one never easy. 18. A house without woman and firelight is like a body without soul or sprite. 19. A lean award is better than a fat judgment. 20. A learned blockhead is a greater blockhead than an ignorant one. 21. A lie stands on one leg, truth on two. 22. A life of leisure and a life of laziness are two things. 23. A light purse is a heavy curse. 24. A little house well filled, a little field well tilled, and a little wife well willed are great riches. 25. All blood is alike ancient. 26. All mankind are beholden to him that is kind to the good. 27. All things are cheap to the saving, dear to the wasteful. 28. All things are easy to industry, all things difficult to sloth. 29. All would live long, but none would be old. 30. A long life may not be good enough, but a good life is long enough. 31. A man in a passion rides a mad horse. 32. A man without a wife is but a half a man. 33. A man without ceremony has need of great merit in its place. 34. Ambition often spends foolishly what avarice had wickedly collected. 35. A mob's a monster. Heads enough, but no brains. 36. A modern wit is one of David's fools. 37. An egg today is better than a hen tomorrow. 38. An empty bag cannot stand upright. 39. A new truth is a truth, and an old error is an error though Claude Pate won't allow either. 40. Anger and folly walk cheek by jowl. Repentance treads on both their heels. 41. Anger is never without a reason, but seldom with a good one. 42. Anger warms the invention, but overheats the oven. 43. An honest man will receive neither money nor praise that is not his due. 44. An hundred thieves cannot strip one naked man, especially if his skin's off. 45. An ill wound, but not an ill name, may be healed. 46. An innocent plowman is more worthy than a vicious prince. 47. Anoint a villain, and he'll stab you. Stab him, and he'll anoint you. 48. An old man in a house is a good sign. 49. An old young man will be a young old man. 50. An ounce of wit that is bought is worth a pound that is taught. 51. An undutiful daughter will prove an unmanageable wife. 52. A pair of good ears will drain dry an hundred tongues. 53. A plowman on his legs is higher than a gentleman on his knees. 54. Approve not of him that commends all you say. 55. A quarrelsome man has no good neighbors. 56. A quiet conscience sleeps in thunder. 57. Are you angry that others disappoint you? Remember, you cannot depend upon yourself. 58. As charms are nonsense, nonsense is a charm. 59. Ask and have is sometimes dear buying. 60. 
a soft tongue may strike hard sixty one as pride increases fortune declines sixty two as sore places meet most rubs proud folks meet most affronts sixty three a temper to bear much will have much to bear sixty four a wicked hero will turn his back to an innocent coward sixty five as we must account for every idle word so we must for every idle silence sixty six at a great pennyworth pause a while sixty seven a traveller should have a hog's nose deer's legs and an ass's back sixty eight at the working man's house hunger looks in but dares not enter sixty nine at twenty years of age the will reigns at thirty the wit at forty the judgment seventy bad commentators spoil the best of books seventy one bad gains are truly losses seventy two bargaining has neither friends nor relations seventy three be always ashamed to catch thyself idle seventy four be at war with your vices at peace with your neighbors seventy five beauty and folly are old companions seventy six being ignorant is not so much a shame as being unwilling to learn seventy seven ben beats his pate and fancies wit will come but he may knock there's nobody at home seventy eight be not niggardly of what costs thee nothing as courtesy counsel and countenance seventy nine be slow in choosing a friend slower in changing eighty better is a little with content than much with contention eighty one better slip with foot than tongue eighty two beware beware he'll cheat without scruple who can without fear eighty three beware of him that is slow to anger he is angry for something and will not be pleased for nothing eighty four beware of little expenses a small leak will sink a great ship eighty five beware of meat twice boiled and an old foe reconciled eighty six beware of the young doctor and the old barber eighty seven blame all and praise all are two blockheads eighty eight blessed is he that expects nothing for he shall never be disappointed eighty nine buy what thou hast no need of and ere long thou shalt sell thy necessaries ninety by diligence and patience the mouse bit into the cable ninety one calamity and prosperity are the touchstones of integrity ninety two ceremony is not civility nor civility ceremony ninety three changing countries or beds cures neither a bad manager nor a fever ninety four cheese and salt meat should be sparingly eat ninety five children and princes will quarrel for trifles ninety six clean your finger before you point at my spots ninety seven clearly spoken mr fogg you explain english by greek ninety eight content and riches seldom meet together riches take thou contentment i had rather ninety nine content is the philosopher's stone that turns all it touches into gold end of section o section one of poor richard's almanac by benjamin franklin this librivox recording is in the public domain 
read by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana aphorisms one hundred through one hundred and ninety nine one hundred content makes poor men rich discontent makes rich men poor one hundred and one courage would fight but discretion won't let him one hundred and two creditors have better memories than debtors one hundred and three cut the wings of your hens and hopes lest they lead you to a wary dance after them one hundred and four danger is sauce for prayers one hundred and five dally not with other folks women or money one hundred and six death takes no bribes one hundred and seven declaiming against pride is not always a sign of humility one hundred and eight defer not thy well-doing be not like st george who is always on horseback but never rides on one hundred and nine deny self for self's sake one hundred and ten despair ruins some presumption many one hundred and eleven different sets like different clocks may all be near the matter though they don't quite agree one hundred and twelve diligence is the mother of good luck one hundred and thirteen diligence overcomes difficulties sloth makes them one hundred fourteen distrust and caution are the parents of security one hundred fifteen do good to thy friend to keep him to thy enemy to gain him one hundred sixteen doing an injury puts you below your enemy revenging one makes you but even with him forgiving it sets you above him one seventeen do not do that which you would not have known one hundred eighteen do me the favor to deny me at once one nineteen don't go to the doctor with every distemper nor to the lawyer with every quarrel nor to the pot for every thirst one twenty don't judge of men's wealth or piety by their sunday appearances one twenty one don't misinform your doctor nor your lawyer one twenty two don't overload gratitude if you do she'll kick one twenty three don't think to hunt two hares with one dog one twenty four don't throw stones at your neighbors if your own windows are glass one twenty five don't value a man for the quality he is of but for the qualities he possesses one twenty six dost thou love life then do not squander time for that's the stuff life is made of one twenty seven drink does not drown care but waters it and makes it grow faster one twenty eight drink water put the money in your pocket and leave the dry belly ache in the punch bowl one twenty nine drive thy business or it will drive thee one thirty drunkenness that worst of evils makes some men fools some beasts some devils one thirty one early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise one thirty two eat few suppers and you'll need few medicines one thirty three eat to please thyself but dress to please others one thirty four employ thy time well if thou meanest to gain leisure one thirty five ever since follies have pleased fools have been able to divert one thirty six every man has assurance enough to boast of his honesty 
few of their understanding. 137. Experience keeps a dear school, yet fools will learn in no other. 138. Eyes and priests bear no jests. 139. Fear God, and your enemies will fear you. 140. Fear not death, for the sooner we die, the longer shall we be immortal. 141. Fear to do ill, and you need fear not else. 142. Fine linen girls, and gold so bright, choose not to take by candlelight. 143. Fish and visitors stink in three days. 144. Fly pleasures, and they'll follow you. 145. Fond pride of dress is sure an empty curse. Ere fancy you consult, consult your purse. 146. Fools make feasts, and wise men eat them. 147. Fools multiply folly. 148. Fools need advice most, but wise men only are the better for it. 149. For age and want save while you may, no morning sun lasts a whole day. 150. For one poor man there are an hundred indigent. 151. For want of a nail, the shoe is lost. For want of a shoe, the horse is lost. For want of a horse, the rider is lost. 152. Friendship cannot live without ceremony, nor without civility. 153. Friendship increases by visiting friends, but by visiting seldom. 154. Full of courtesy, full of craft. 155. Generous minds are all of kin. 156. Genius without education is like silver in the mine. 157. Gifts burst rocks. 158. Gifts much expected are paid, not given. 159. Give me yesterday's bread, this day's flesh, and last year's cider. 160. Glass, china, and reputation are easily cracked, and never well mended. 161. God gives all things to industry. 162. God heals, and the doctor takes the fees. 163. God helps them that help themselves. 164. God, parents, and instructors can never be requited. 165. Good sense is a thing all need, few have, and none think they want. 166. Good wives and good plantations are made by good husbands. 167. Grace thou thy house, and let not that grace thee. 168. Graft good fruit all, or graft not at all. 169. Great almsgiving lessens no man's living. 170. Great estates may venture more, little boats must keep near shore. 171. Great famine when wolves eat wolves. 172. Great good nature without prudence is a great misfortune. 173. Great merit is coy as well as great pride. 174. Great modesty often hides great merit. 175. Great spenders are bad lenders. 176. Great talkers, little doers. 177. 
great talkers should be cropped for they've no need of ears one seventy eight half hospitality opens his door and shuts up his countenance one seventy nine half the truth is often a great lie one eighty half wits talk much but say little one eighty one happy that nation fortunate that age whose history is not diverting one eighty two happy's the wooing that's not long a doing one eighty three happy tom crump ne'er sees his own hump one eighty four haste makes waste one eighty five harry smatter has a mouth for every matter one eighty six have you somewhat to do to-morrow do it to-day one eighty seven having been poor is no shame but being ashamed of it is one eighty eight hear no ill of a friend nor speak any of an enemy one eighty nine hear a reason or she'll make you feel her one ninety he does not possess wealth it possesses him one ninety one he has changed his one-eyed horse for a blind one. One ninety-two. He has lost his boots but saved his spurs. One ninety-three. He is a governor that governs his passions, and he is a servant that serves them. One ninety-four. He is ill-clothed to his bear of virtue. One ninety-five. He is no clown that drives the plow. But he that doth clownish things. One ninety six. He is not well bred that cannot bear ill breeding in others. One ninety seven. Help hands, for I have no lands. One ninety eight. He makes a foe who makes a jest. One ninety nine. Here comes the orator with his flood of words and his drop of reason. End of section 1. Aphorisms 100 through 199. Section 2 of Poor Richard's Almanac by Benjamin Franklin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Aphorisms 200 through 299. 200. He's a fool that cannot conceal his wisdom. 201. He's a fool that makes his doctor his heir. 202. He's gone and forgot nothing but to say farewell to his creditors. 203. He's the best physician that knows the worthlessness of the most medicines. 204. He that best understands the world least likes it. 205. He that builds before he counts the cost acts foolishly, and he that counts before he builds finds he did not count wisely. 206. He that buys by the penny maintains not only himself but other people. 207. He that by the plow would thrive himself must either hold or drive. 208. He that can bear a reproof and mend by it, if he is not wise, is in a fair way of being so. 209. He that can compose himself is wiser than he that composes books. 210. He that can have patience can have what he will. 211. He that cannot bear with other people's passions cannot govern his own. 212. He that cannot obey cannot command. 213. He that can take rest is greater than he that can take cities. 214. He that can travel well afoot keeps a good horse. 215. He that doth what he should not shall feel what he would not. 216. He that drinks fast pays slow. 
to seventeen he that drinks his cider alone let him catch his horse alone to eighteen he that falls in love with himself will have no rivals to nineteen he that goes far to marry will either deceive or be deceived to twenty he that has a trade has an office of profit and honor to twenty one he that has not got a wife is not yet a complete man to twenty two he that hath a trade hath an estate to twenty three he that is of opinion money will do everything may well be suspected of doing everything for money to twenty four he that is rich need not live sparingly and he that can live sparingly need not be rich to twenty five he that lies down with dogs shall rise up with fleas to twenty six he that never eats too much will never be lazy to twenty seven he that pays for work before it's done has but a pennyworth for two pence to twenty eight he that pursues two hares at once does not catch one and lets t'other go to twenty nine he that resolves to mend hereafter resolves not to mend now to thirty he that riseth late must trot all day and shall scarce overtake his business by night to thirty one he that scatters thorns let him not go barefoot to thirty two he that's content hath enough he that complains has too much to thirty three he that sells upon trust loses many friends and always wants money to thirty four he that sows thorns should never go barefoot to thirty five he that speaks ill of the mayor will buy her to thirty six he that speaks much is much mistaken to thirty seven he that spills the rum loses that only he that drinks it often loses both that and himself to thirty eight he that takes a wife takes care to thirty nine he that waits upon a fortune is never sure of a dinner to forty he that won't be counseled can't be helped to forty one he that would catch fish must venture his bait to forty two he that would have a short lent let him borrow money to be repaid at easter to forty three he that would live in peace and at ease must not speak all he knows nor judge all he sees to forty four he that would rise at court must begin by creeping to forty five he that would travel much should eat little to forty six he who multiplies riches multiplies cares to forty seven he who buys had need have one hundred eyes but one's enough for him that sells the stuff to forty eight hold your counsel before dinner the full belly hates thinking as well as acting to forty nine honors change manners to fifty honor thy father and mother i e live so as to be an honor to them when they are dead to fifty one hope and a red rag are baits for men and mackerel to fifty two hope of gain lessens pain to fifty three how few there are who have courage enough to own their faults to fifty four hunger is the best pickle to fifty five hunger never saw bad bread to fifty six idleness is the dead sea that swallows all virtues to fifty seven idleness is the greatest prodigality to fifty eight if it were not for the belly the back might wear gold to fifty nine if Jack's in love, he's no judge of Jill's beauty. 260. If man could have half his wishes, he would double his troubles. 261. 
if passion drives let reason hold the reins 262 if pride leaves the van beggary brings up the rear 263 if thou hast wit and learning add to it wisdom and modesty 264 if thou injurest conscience it will have its revenge on thee 265 if thou wouldst live long live well for folly and wickedness shorten life 266 if wind blows on you through a hole make your will and take care of your soul 267 if worldly goods cannot save me from death they ought not to hinder me my eternal life 268 if you'd be beloved make yourself amiable 269 if you desire many things many things seem but a few 270 if you'd have a servant that you like serve yourself 271 if you'd have it done go if not send 272 if you'd know the value of money go and borrow some 273 if you'd lose a troublesome visitor lend him money 274 if you do what you would not you must hear what you would not 275 if you have no money in your pot have some in your mouth 276 if you have time don't wait for time 277 if you know how to spend less than you get you have the philosopher's stone 278 if your head is wax don't walk in the sun 279 if you ride a horse sit close and tight if you ride a man sit easy and light 280 if your riches are yours why don't you take them with you to the other world 281 if you would be loved love and be lovable 282 if you would be revenged of your enemy govern yourself 283 if you would have guests merry with cheer be so yourself or so at least appear 284 if you would keep your secret from an enemy tell it not to a friend 285 if you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten either write things worth reading or do things worth writing 286 if you would reap praise you must sow the seeds gentle words and useful deeds 287 ignorance leads men into a party and shame keeps them from getting out again 288 I have never seen the philosopher's stone that turns lead into gold, but I have known the pursuit of it turn a man's gold into lead. 289. Ill company is like a dog who darts those most that he loves best. 290. Ill customs and bad advice are seldom forgotten. 291. Ah, weren't she goes before rashness. Who'd have thought it comes sneaking after? 292. Industry pays debts. Despair increases them. 293. In success, be moderate. 294. Interest which blinds some people enlightens others. 295. In the affairs of this world, men are saved not by faith, but by the want of it. 296. I saw few die of hunger, of eating one hundred thousand. 297. Is there anything men take more pains about than to render themselves unhappy? 298. It is better to take many injuries than to give one. 299. It is ill jesting with the joiner's tools, worse with the doctor's. End of section 2. Section 3 of Poor Richard's Almanac by Benjamin Franklin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Aphorisms 300 through 399. 
three hundred it is ill manners to silence a fool and cruelty to let him go on three o one it is not leisure that is not used three o two it is wise not to seek a secret and honest not to reveal it three o three it's common for men to give pretended reasons instead of one real one three o four it's the easiest thing in the world for a man to deceive himself three o five jack little sowed little and little he'll reap three o six keep flax from fire youth from gaming three o seven keep thou from the opportunity and god will keep thee from the sin three o eight keep thy shop and thy shop will keep thee three o nine keep your eyes wide open before marriage half shut afterwards three ten keep your mouth wet feet dry three eleven kings and bears often worry their keepers three twelve kings have long arms but misfortune longer let none think themselves out of her reach three thirteen late children early orphans three fourteen laws like the cobwebs catch small flies great ones break through before your eyes three fifteen laws too gentle are seldom obeyed too severe seldom executed three sixteen laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him three seventeen learn of the skilful he that teaches himself hath a fool for his master three eighteen lend money to an enemy and thou'lt gain him to a friend and thou'lt lose him three nineteen let all men know thee but no man know thee thoroughly men freely ford that see the shallows three twenty let every new year find you a better man three twenty one let the child's first lesson be obedience and the second may be what thou wilt three twenty two let thy discontents be thy secrets if the world knows them twill despise thee and increase them three twenty three let thy maid servant be faithful strong and homely three twenty four let thy vices die before thee three twenty five liberality is not giving much but giving wisely three twenty six light gains heavy purses three twenty seven light-heeled mothers make leaden-heeled daughters three twenty eight light purse heavy heart three twenty nine little rogues easily become great ones three thirty little strokes fell great oaks three thirty one look before or you'll find yourself behind three thirty two lost time is never found again three thirty three love and be loved three thirty four love cough and a smoke can't well be hid three thirty five lover and lordship hate companions three thirty six lovers travelers and poets will give money to be heard three thirty seven love well whip well three thirty eight love your enemies for they tell you your faults three thirty nine love your neighbor yet don't pull down your hedge three forty lying rides upon death's back three forty one mad kings and mad bulls are not to be held by treaties and pack thread three forty two many a man's own tongue gives evidence against his understanding three forty three many a man would have been worse if his estate had been better three forty four 
many a meal is lost for want of meat 345 many complain of their memory few of their judgment 346 many dishes many diseases 347 many estates are spent in the getting 348 many foxes grow gray but few grow good 349 many have quarreled about religion that never practiced it 350 many medicines few cures 351 many princes sin with david but few repent with him 352 many would live by their wits but break for want of stock 353 marry above thy match and thou'lt get a master 354 marry your son when you will but your daughter when you can 355 mary's mouth costs her nothing for she never opens it but at others expense 356 meanness is the parent of insolence 357 men and melons are hard to know 358 men differ daily about things which are subject to sense is it likely then they should agree about things invisible 359 men meet mountains never 360 men often mistake themselves seldom forget themselves 361 men take more pains to mask than mend 362 money and good manners make the gentleman 363 money and man a mutual friendship show man makes false money money makes man so 364 most fools think they are only ignorant 365 most of the learning in use is of no great use 366 most people return small favors acknowledge middling ones and repay great ones with ingratitude 367 much virtue in herbs little in men 368 necessity has no law i know some attorneys of the same 369 necessity has no law why because tis not to be had without money 370 necessity never made a good bargain 371 ne'er take a wife till thou hast a house and a fire to put her in 372 neglect kills injuries revenge increases them 373 neglect mending a small fault and twill soon be a great one 374 neither praise nor dispraise till seven christmases be over 375 never entreat a servant to dwell with thee 376 never praise your cider horse or bedfellow 377 never spare the parson's wine nor the baker's pudding 378 nice eaters seldom meet with a good dinner 379 nick's passions grow fat and hearty his understanding looks consumptive 380 nine men in ten are suicides 381 no gains without pains 382 no man e'er was glorious who was not laborious 383 none are deceived but they that confide 384 none know the unfortunate and the fortunate do not know themselves 385 none preaches better than the ant and she says nothing 386 no resolution repenting hereafter can be sincere 387 nor eye in a letter nor hand in a purse nor ear in the secret of another 388 nothing but money is sweeter than honey 389 nothing dries sooner than a tear 
390. Nothing humbler than ambition when it is about to climb. 391. Nothing more like a fool than a drunken man. 392. Nothing so popular as goodness. 393. Now I've a sheep and a cow, everybody bids me good morrow. 394. No wood without bark. 395. No workman without tools, nor lawyer without fools, can live by their rules. 396. Observe all men, thyself most. 397. Observe old vellum, he praises former times as if he'd a mind to sell em. 398. Of learned fools I have seen ten times ten. Of unlearned wise men I have seen a hundred. 399. O oh, lazy bones, dost thou think God would have given thee arms and legs if he had not designed thou shouldst use them? End of section 3. Section 4 of Poor Richard's Almanac by Benjamin Franklin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Aphorisms 400 through 499. 400. Old boys have their playthings as well as young ones. The difference is only in the price. 401. Old young and old long. 402. One good husband is worth two good wives, for the scarcer things are, the more they are valued. 403. One may be more cunning than another, but not more cunning than everybody else. 404. One mend fault is worth two find faults, but one find fault is better than two make faults. 405. One today is worth two tomorrows. 406. Onions can make even heirs and widows weep. 407. Pain wastes the body, pleasures the understanding. 408. Pardoning the bad is injuring the good. 409. Patience in market is worth pounds in a year. 410. Pay what you owe and you'll know what's your own. 411. Philosophy as well as foppery often changes fashion. 412. Plow deep while sluggards sleep. 413. Polio, who values nothing that's within, buys books as men hunt beavers for their skin. 414. Poor Dick eats like a well man and drinks like a sick. 415. Poor plain dealing, dead without issue. 416. Poverty, poetry, and new titles of honor make men ridiculous. 417. Poverty wants some things, luxury many things, avarice all things. 418. Praise to the undeserving is severe satire. 419. Pray don't burn my house to roast your eggs. 420. Prayers and provender hinder no journey. 421. Presumption first blinds a man, then sets him a-running. 422. Pretty and witty will wound if they hit ye. 423. Pride and the gout are seldom cured throughout. 424. Pride, breakfasted with plenty, dined with poverty, supped with infamy. 425. Pride dines upon vanity, sups on contempt. 426. Pride is as loud a beggar as want, and a great deal more saucy. 427. Pride gets into the coach, and shame mounts behind. 428. Proclaim not all thou knowest, all thou owest, all thou hast, nor all thou canst. 
429 prodigality of time produces poverty of mind as well as of estate 430 promises may get thee friends but non-performance will turn them into enemies 431 proud modern learning despises the ancient schoolmen are now laughed at by schoolboys 432 quarrels never could last long if on one side only lay the wrong 433 rather go to bed supperless than run in debt for a breakfast 434 reading makes a full man meditation a profound man discourse a clear man 435 read much but not many books 436 retirement does not always secure virtue lot was upright in the city wicked in the mountain 437 rob not for burnt offerings 438 rob not god nor the poor lest thou ruin thyself the eagle snatched a coal from the altar but it fired her nest 439 samson with his strong body had a weak head or he would not have laid in a harlot's lap 440 saying and doing have quarrelled and parted 441 search others for their virtues thyself for thy vices 442 sell not virtue to purchase wealth nor liberty to purchase power 443 silence is not always a sign of wisdom but babbling is ever a mark of folly 444 silks and satins put out the kitchen fire 445 since thou art not sure of a minute throw not away an hour 446 singularity in the right hath ruined many happy those who are convinced of the general opinion 447 sleep without supping and you'll rise without owing for it 448 sloth and silence are a fool's virtues 449 sloth like rust consumes faster than labor wears the used key is always bright 450 snowy winter a plentiful harvest 451 some are justly laughed at for keeping their money foolishly others for spending it idly he is the greatest fool that lays it out in a purchase of repentance 452 some are weatherwise some are otherwise 453 some make conscience of wearing a hat in the church who make none of robbing the altar 454 sorrow is good for nothing but sin 455 spare and have is better than spend and crave 456 speak and speed the closed mouth catches no flies 457 speak little do much 458 speak with contempt of none from slave to king the meanest bee hath and will use a sting. 459. Strange that a man who has wit enough to write a satire should have folly enough to publish it. 460. Strange that he who lives by shifts can seldom shift himself. 461. Strive to be the greatest man in your country, and you may be disappointed. Strive to be the best, and you may succeed. He may well win the race that runs by himself. 462. Success has ruined many a man. 463. Sudden power is apt to be insolvent, sudden liberty saucy. That behaves best which has grown gradually. 464. Suspicion may be no fault, but showing it may be a great one. 465. Take counsel in wine, but resolve afterwards in water. 
466. Take courage, mortal. Death can't banish thee out of the universe. 467. Take heed of the vinegar of sweet wine and the anger of good nature. 468. Take this remark from Richard. Poor and lame, whatever is begun in anger ends in shame. 469. Talking against religion is unchaining a tiger. The beast let loose may worry his deliverer. 470. Tart words make no friends. A spoonful of honey will catch more flies than a gallon of vinegar. 471. Teach your child to hold his tongue. He'll learn fast enough to speak. 472. Tell a miser he's rich and a woman she's old. You'll get no money of one nor kindness of t'other. 473. Tell me my faults and mend your own. 474. The absent are never without fault, nor the present without excuse. 475. The ancients tell us what is best, but we must learn of the moderns what is fittest. 476. The bell calls others to church, but itself never minds the sermon. 477. The bird that sits is easily shot. 478. The brave and the wise can both pity and excuse when cowards and fools show no mercy. 479. The busy man has few idle visitors. To the boiling pot the flies come not. 480. The cat in gloves catches no mice. 481. The creditors are a superstitious sect, great observers of set days and times. 482. The cunning man steals a horse, the wise man lets him alone. 493. The devil sweetens poison with honey. 484. The discontented man finds no easy chair. 485. The doors of wisdom are never shut. 486. The end of passion is the beginning of repentance. 487. The excellency of hogs is fatness, of men, virtue. 488. The eye of a master will do more work than his hand. 489. The family of fools is ancient. 490. The favor of the great is no inheritance. 491. The generous mind least regards money, and yet most feels the want of it. 492. The golden age never was the present age. 493. The good paymaster is lord of another man's purse. 494. The good or ill hap of a good or ill life is the good or ill choice of a good or ill wife. 495. The heart of the fool is in his mouth, but the mouth of the wise man is in his heart. 496. The heathens, when they died, went to bed without a candle. 497. The honest man takes pains and then enjoys pleasures. The knave takes pleasures and then suffers pains. 498. The honey is sweet, but the bee has a sting. 499. The horse thinks one thing, and he that saddles him another. End of section 4《Section 5 of Poor Richard's Almanac》by Benjamin Franklin. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Aphorisms 500 through 599. 500. The idle man is the devil's hireling, whose livery is rags, whose diet and wages are famine and diseases. 501. The king's cheese is half wasted in parings, but no matter, tis made of the people's milk. 502. The learned fool writes his nonsense in better language than the unlearned, but still tis nonsense. 503. 
the magistrate should obey the laws the people should obey the magistrate 504 the master's eye will do more work than both his hands 505 the miser's cheese is wholesomest 506 the most exquisite folly is made of wisdom spun too fine 507 the muses love the morning 508 the nearest way to come to glory is to do that for conscience which we do for glory 509 the noblest question in the world is what good may i do in it 510 the old man has given all to his son o oh, fool to undress thyself before thou art going to bed 511 the painful preacher like a candle bright consumes himself in giving others light 512 the poor have little beggars none the rich too much enough not one 513 the poor man must walk to get meat for his stomach the rich man to get a stomach to his meat 514 the prodigal generally does more injustice than the covetous 515 the proof of gold is fire the proof of woman gold the proof of man a woman 516 the proud hate pride in others 517 there are lazy minds as well as lazy bodies 518 there are no fools so troublesome as those that have wit 519 there are no ugly loves nor handsome prisons 520 there are three faithful friends an old wife an old dog and ready money 521 there are three things extremely hard steel a diamond and to know oneself 522 there is neither honor nor gain got in dealing with a villain 523 there is no little enemy 524 there is no man so bad but he secretly respects the good 525 there is much difference between imitating a good man and counterfeiting him 526 there's a time to wink as well as to see 527 there's many witty men whose brains can't fill their bellies 528 there's more old drunkards than old doctors 529 there's none deceived but he that trusts 530 there's small revenge in words but words may be greatly revenged 531 there was never a good knife made of bad steel 532 they who have nothing to trouble them will be troubled at nothing 533 the rivers and bad governments the lightest things swim at top 534 the rotten apple spoils his companion 535 the royal crown cures not the headache 536 the same man cannot be both friend and flatterer 537 the sleeping fox catches no poultry up up 538 the second vice is lying the first is running into debt 539 the sting of the reproach is the truth of it 540 the son never repents of the good he does nor does he ever demand a recompense 541 the things which hurt instruct 542 the tongue is ever turning to the aching tooth 543 the tongue offends and the ears get the cuffing 544 the too obliging temper is ever more disobliging itself 545 the way to be safe is never to be secure 546 
the way to see by faith is to shut the eye of reason the morning daylight appears plainer when you put out your candle 547 the wise man draws more advantage from his enemies than the fool from his friends 548 the worst wheel of the cart makes the most noise 549 the wolf sheds his coat once a year his disposition never 550 think of three things whence you came where you are going and to whom you must account 551 thirst after dessert not reward 552 though modesty is a virtue bashfulness is a vice 553 those that have much business must have much pardon 554 those who are feared are hated 555 those who in quarrels interpose must often wipe a bloody nose 556 though the mastiff be gentle yet bite him not by the lip 557 thou canst not joke an enemy into a friend but thou mayest a friend into an enemy 558 three good meals a day is bad living 559 three may keep a secret if two of them are dead 560 three things are men most likely to be cheated in a horse a wig and a wife 561. Tim and his handsaw are good in their place, though not fit for preaching or shaving a face. 562. Time enough always proves little enough. 563. Time is an herb that cures all diseases. 564. Tim was so learned that he could name a horse in nine languages so ignorant that he bought a cow to ride on 565 tis against some men's principles to pay interest and seems against others interest to pay the principal 566 tis a laudable ambition that aims at being better than his neighbors 567 tis a shame that your family is an honor to you you ought to be an honor to your family 568. Tis a strange forest that has no rotten wood in it, and a strange kindred that all are good in it. 569. Tis better leave for an enemy at one's death than beg of a friend in one's life. 570. Tis easier to build two chimneys than maintain one in fuel. 571. Tis easier to prevent bad habits than to break them. 572. Tis easy to see, hard to foresee. 573. Tis easier to suppress the first desire than to satisfy all that follow it. 574. Tis great confidence in a friend to tell him your faults, greater to tell him his. 575. Tis hard, but glorious, to be poor and honest. 576. Tis less discredit to abridge petty charges than to stoop to petty gettings. 577. Tis not a holiday that's not kept holy. 578. Tis a well-spent penny that saves a groat. 579. To bear other people's afflictions, everyone has courage enough and to spare. 580. To be intimate with a foolish friend is like going to bed with a razor. 581. To be proud of knowledge is to be blind with light. To be proud of virtue is to poison yourself with the antidote. 582. Today is yesterday's pupil. 583. To err is human, to repent divine, to persist devilish. 584. To lengthen thy life, lessen thy meals. 585. Tomorrow every fault is to be amended, but that tomorrow never comes. 
five eighty six tom veins your pains they all will fail ne'er was good arrow made of a sow's tail five eighty seven tongue double brings trouble five eighty eight too much plenty makes mouth dainty five eighty nine to whom thy secret thou dost tell to him thy freedom thou dost sell five ninety tricks and treachery are the practice of fools that have not enough wit to be honest five ninety one trouble springs from idleness toil from ease five ninety two trust thyself and another shall not betray thee five ninety three two dry sticks will burn a green one five ninety four up sluggard and waste not life in the grave will be sleeping enough five ninety five vainglory floweretheth but beareth no fruit five ninety six vanity backbites more than malice five ninety seven vice knows she's ugly so puts on her mask five ninety eight virtue and a trade are a child's best portion five ninety nine virtue and happiness are mother and daughter end of section five section six of poor richard's almanac by benjamin franklin this librivox recording is in the public domain read for you by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana aphorisms six hundred through six seventy six hundred virtue may not always make a face handsome but vice will certainly make it ugly six o one visits should be short like a winter's day lest you're too troublesome hasten away six o two visit your aunt but not every day and call at your brothers but not every night six o three want of care does us more damage than want of knowledge six o four wars bring scars six o five we are not so sensible of the greatest health as of the least sickness six o six wealth is not his that has it but his that enjoys it six o seven weighty questions ask for deliberate answers six o eight welcome mischief if thou comest alone six o nine well done is better than well said six ten well done is twice done six eleven we may give advice but we cannot give conduct six twelve what is a butterfly at best he's but a caterpillar dressed the gaudy fops his picture just six thirteen what's given shines what's received is rusty six fourteen what signifies knowing the names if you know not the nature of the things six fifteen what signifies your patience if you can't find it when you want it six sixteen what's proper is becoming see the blacksmith with his white silk apron six seventeen what you would seem to be be really six eighteen when a friend deals with a friend let the bargain be clear and well penned that they may be continue friends to the end six nineteen when befriended remember it when you befriend forget it six twenty when death puts out your flame the snuff will tell if we were wax or tallow by the smell six twenty one when knaves betray each other one can scarce be blamed or the other pitied six twenty two when knaves fall out honest men get their goods when priests dispute we come at the truth six twenty three when out of favour none know thee when in thou dost not know thyself six twenty four when prosperity was well mounted she let go the bridle and soon came tumbling out of the saddle six twenty five 
when reason preaches if you won't hear her she'll box your ears six twenty six when there's more malice shown than matter on the writer falls the satire six twenty seven when the well's dry we know the worth of water six twenty eight when the wine enters out goes the truth six twenty nine when tis fair be sure take your coat with you six thirty when you're good to others you are best to yourself six thirty one when you speak to a man look on his eyes when he speaks to thee look on his mouth six thirty two when you taste honey remember gall six thirty three where bread is wanting all's to be sold six thirty four where good laws are much people flock thither six thirty five where sense is wanting everything is wanting six thirty six where there's no law there's no bread six thirty seven where there is hunger law is not regarded and where law is not regarded there will be hunger six thirty eight where there is marriage without love there will be love without marriage six thirty nine where yet was ever found the mother who'd change her baby for another six forty wide will wear but narrow will tear six forty one wink at small faults remember thou hast great ones six forty two wish not so much to live long as to live well six forty three without justice courage is weak six forty four with the old almanac and the old year leave thy old vice though ever so dear six forty five who dainties love shall beggars prove six forty six who has deceived thee so oft as thyself six forty seven who is powerful he that governs his passions six forty eight who is rich he that is content six forty nine who is rich he that rejoices in his portion six fifty who is strong he that can conquer his bad habits six fifty one who is wise he that learns from every one six fifty two who judges best of a man his enemies or himself six fifty three who knows a fool must know his brother for one will recommend another six fifty four willows are weak but they bind the faggot six fifty five wish a miser long life and you wish him no good six fifty six women and wine game and deceit make the wealth small and the wants great six fifty seven words may show a man's wit but actions his meaning six fifty eight would you live with ease do what you ought not what you please six fifty nine would you persuade speak of interest not of reason six sixty write injuries in dust benefits in marble six sixty one write with the learned pronounce with the vulgar six sixty two why does the blind man's wife paint herself six sixty three you can bear your own faults and why not a fault in your wife six sixty four you may be too cunning for one but not for all six sixty five you may delay but time will not six sixty six you may give a man an office but you cannot give him discretion six sixty seven you may talk too much on the best subjects six sixty eight you may sometimes be much in the wrong in owning your being in the right six sixty nine youth is pert and positive age modest and doubting so ears of corn when young and light stand bolt upright but hang their heads when weighty full and ripe six seventy 
you will be careful if you are wise how you touch men's religion or credit or eyes end of section six end of poor richard's almanac by benjamin franklin read for you by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana in december two thousand fifteen thanks for listening